Today is the last Sunday after Pentecost, the final Sunday of our church year. We mimic the trees outside and giving up our green coverings. And since about 1925, this day has also been called Christ the King Sunday. In terms of public holiday awareness, I think that this probably ranks right up there with like Bubble Wrap Appreciation Day or National Scrapple Day, these holidays that really do exist but only for a few people with some very niche interests. So 1925, a fairly recent innovation in the life of the church, there's this guy named Pope Pius XI. The 11th, because apparently there's a shortage of original names for popes. I mean, never has been a Pope Amber. Or a Pope Scott, got a few Pauls, you might have a shot still, huh? In 1925, Pope Pius, though, the 11th, looked around and noticed that the world was growing ever more secular. Folks had stopped paying so much attention to popes, particularly what popes had to say about which lands belong to the Holy Roman Empire and who gets to govern those lands. So Pope Pius XI makes a declaration. The final Sunday of the liturgical year will be called Christ the King Sunday. The official title is The Solemnity of Our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. I'm not making this up. King of the Universe because no one listens to popes anymore. It's sort of breathtaking in its irony, isn't it? It reminds me of driving through those abandoned back roads in Kansas, making my way home, and spotting a billboard in a field urging me to follow Jesus. Like, I'm covered here, and there's no one else around, so who are you talking to? The irony, though, of Christ the King compounds when you start to enter into Scripture. Because there's actually a story from the Gospels where people are searching for Jesus because they want to make him king. He sees them coming, you know the story, and he knows what they're about to do, and you know what he does. He runs away. Christ the King Sunday. And it is the height of injustice that that passage never comes up in the lectionary cycle for today. What does come up in the lectionary on other years is the conversation where Pilate has the prisoner Jesus brought before him. Pilate looks this unremarkable, beaten, shackled, dirty Jewish guy up and down and says, so you're some kind of king. Pilate is laughing, and Pilate is us. We know what kings are and it's not this. Stories about kings are all over scripture, all the way back to the beginnings of the Jewish people where the semi-autonomous tribes get together and say they want a king. And the people clamor to the prophet Samuel. You know these stories. We want a king. We give us a king. We need a king. God gets the message from Samuel, and responds. And God actually sounds a little hurt in the response. Why do you need a king? You've got me. You don't want a king. He takes the best parts of what you have. He'll take your earnings. He'll take your children. You do not want a king. But the people clamor on, we want a king. Give us a king. We need a king. Saul is chosen. And the report on Saul is that he is tall and handsome. We get no discussion of his disposition, policy, manners, pedigree, education, history. But he's what we want in a king. He's tall and he's handsome. And man, if this story doesn't keep repeating itself ad nauseum, I don't know what it is about us that needs a king, but it's something deep in there. Someone tall, standing ahead above the ordinary masses, 
And if he can't be handsome, his magnetism will more than make up for it. We spend so much of our time on kings. There's something about the number of followers one can attract that makes us ready to pledge our allegiance to them too, ready to pledge allegiance to this way of telling me, of telling us, who is in and who is out. Which king are you behind? Of course, you've caught on. I don't mean actual kings, given that I live in a republic where our kings get cycled through more quickly with more variety. I don't mean actual kings until I do mean actual kings. Even the British monarchy, completely gutted of its official authority and power, enthralls us. We were just talking about the crown. We love kings. I don't know where I heard once that the marker of a good government is when you don't notice it in your life, but I don't think we really believe that. We love kings. We love to hate kings. We obsess over them. We feed them with ourselves. They drive children from their parents. They take the best parts of us. Christ the King Sunday a small and strange billboard posted in a land where all we know are kings. Even our gospel today seems ready to tell us who is in and who is out. The sheep and the goats, a delineation of your allegiance. Now this is one of the more famous passages of scripture for mainline Protestants, I think. Matthew 25, where we hear that feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting the prisoner, welcoming a stranger are the unlikely markers of those who belong in God's kingdom. Nothing at all about accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just humble actions. Episcopalians, you know, we tend to like this one, though we're not as likely to quote the latter half of the passage where we hear that those who do not feed the hungry, or clothe the naked, or visit the prisoner, or welcome the stranger, are those who are headed for the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. I don't know about you, but I read this passage with both relief and conviction. I have done those things that put me on the in crowd. And then I have also not done those things and feel the impossibility of having enough for everyone who asks of me. I am in and I am out, a strange chimera of sheep and goat, and maybe some days I'm more one than the other. Maybe you are too. And maybe that's the right dichotomy to hold on Christ the King Sunday. That this allegiance doesn't turn you into a righteous Christian soldier in the correct king's ranks, but actually starts to blur the line between enemy and friend, the line between in and out, that line that runs right through the middle of yourself, too. This would give us a kingdom that subverts all our ideas about kingdoms. It is one that could end our fascination with rivalry and celebrity and scandal. This is the king that dismantles kingship. This is the king of no kings at all. You crown him only by humility. You crown him by your tears. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin.